Good morning, good evening, good everything in between, everybody. As per always, I'm going to stay in the very same line. Um, tonight, I'm really happy to announce a new release for the anime scripter, the release of 1.2.0. This release has taken a bit longer than usual to release to your update, um, mainly for the fact that I focused a lot on the back end of the script, as well as uh, mainly the functionality the overall functionality and uh, just making it much more streamlined compared to how it was you will see a lot of changes both on the ui as well as on the turn terminal backend i've improved the logging as well as removed the progress bar in favor of ffmpegs um well status bar i guess it would be a much more fitting name these were mainly because of internal issues in terms of coding and multi-threading that uh, really just proved difficult for maintaining the script and making it um, function for basically everybody. Let's not get the technical and just talk about the new things in the script. I want you to look at this clip and tell me if you see anything wrong. <laughs> well, you can't really tell me because it's a pre-recorded video, but point still stands, whatever. Um, if I hide this layer, there's still no difference, right? But if I press on this layer and drag it around, you will now see that the video has no background. It had its background removed. Mainly, uh, just to summarize this change, if you remember previously, on uh, the previous auto brushing functions, uh, have had a, a small little drawback, so to say, that the background was green and it really just added a lot of overhead for people in the sense that you will need to key it out, it will lower the performance and everything in between. With this release, you will no longer have to worry about such issues. Everything will be coded and saved on uh, your PC with the alpha layer pre-rendered right into the clip. It should work for basically anything anime related but as well as real life stuff. There should be a quality li of life uh, improvement as well as a f small but not too shabby improvement in performance upwards of like 2 or 3 FPS if I remember correctly. 3 performance is 3 performance, why not? I have removed the motion blur button. Uh, it was not really as good as I wanted it to get it, I wanted to get it, and uh, it's, I'm going to go back to it in the future, but for now, it was a feature that was just adding extra headaches for no purpose, um, since nobody really seemed to use it as much as everything else. One of the biggest complaints um, with previous releases, and just in the past that I've gotten, was the fact that people could not process uh, compositions, and just modified layers everything was always working on the source layer itself with this release i wanted to address that issue by having a new button called pre-render let's make a small little demo of sorts have this scale high this one rotate and this one have a lower opacity for example right you will be able to select all three layers, press pre-render, and After Effects will take all of the modified effects of it, all of the modified um, scaling and everything that you've added and modified on the layer and basically encode it and render it and also put it back into After Effects for you to process with upscaling and whatnot that you would like right to the clip. So you can see that here I applied the rotation, and this has the rotation. Feel free to use it and tell me how it works for you. It should, uh, from personal testing, it seems to work just fine, though you never know. Um, let's see if I can get this back in. Yeah. In the settings panel, you will see a couple of changes as well. Most of these stuffs were related to making the UI more compact. 
I just wanted to remove the extra clutter that was not needed and just wanted to have it as um, DPI friendly as possible or let the low screen resolution friendly as possible. So you will see a couple of changes, mainly that the pathing was removed for uh, since it doesn't, it didn't really prove uh, of much use really from what I've seen. Most of the labels have been moved to the right of their sensitivity label and everything or sensitivity name. So you will now be able to have everything right on the net right next to the uh, way it actually changes basically. There's another option for uh, threads, number of threads or rather multi-threading. Basically, if you have a really high end GPU and you feel like it doesn't properly utilize your system, you can attempt to use multi-threading. Do keep in mind that this is still experimental. It may not function as you would like to. So if you ever run into issues, just be aware that it's not perfect. Uh, upscale model has a new model called Span and CNN with the help of TNT wise um, and uh, Media 2x, I believe it was maybe I'm wrong or final 2x, I'm not even sure anymore. We've basically modified one of the um, GitHub repositories in order to support Span and CNN. It was mainly TNT Vice's work, and I appreciate for his help. You will now be able to run Span on uh, Intel GPUs and AMD GPUs and see how it works. For personal testing, it seems to be just as good as Kugan for about the same performance. Uh, feel free to test it and let me know how, how it fares in your case. Um, as for the models, ah yeah, I have added a new resize method. Well, two new resize methods, that being spline 16 and spline 36. Uh, it may be proved useful for some people, feel free to play around with it. I haven't played much around with it. For downscaling, I will still suggest using area and for upscaling either Langsos or Spline, uh, anything from Spline should work just fine. Major, the most major improvements um, compared to 1.0.0 has been the addition of custom models. Basically, if you have a uh, Coogan model, so to say, that is different to one to the ones that I have in the preset values. You can feel free to select it and utilize it for upscaling. Do keep in mind that this relies on you selecting the upscale model. So if you're gonna use the Kugan model, you need to select Kugan. And if you're gonna use a 4x model, you will need to set this to 4. Or if it's a 3x model, set it to 3 and so on and so forth. Basically, do keep that in mind if you're gonna use a different model you can at any time just press it and um, look for something and select it another addition was or rather the last addition as well it was the addition of custom fmpeg parameters or custom encoding parameters basically if you are um, not satisfied with the encoding parameters you can now play around with them and uh, modify them to your liking. If you hover over it, there's a small example on how you should use them. Uh, do keep in mind, you need to uh, declare the encoder that you want to use and uh, presets and anything in between that you might want to add. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's most of it. Um, That's basically all of it. I'm uh, super excited. Um, I put a lot of effort into this release and I wanted to be, make it as good as possible. I want to thank you and everybody who has joined the Discord server and made uh, promotional videos um, for the script. It's much appreciated. And as well as the financial support that came from some people, I've uh, Massive thanks to you, I guess. There's no better words to say. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, I'm hoping to get back to you in a couple of days, if not a couple of weeks, with the release of 1.3. And until then, enjoy 
Enjoy your time. Have a good one.